Hey, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the road podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never in the building. Yo, what up? We got DJ D Miles. What's good? What's good? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah, what up? What up? And yo, we got a special, special guest. We've been wanting this guest on road for a minute. Probably the first year when we started the podcast in like 2017, 2018, we wanted this guest. It never worked out uh, for some reason, but we finally got him here. You know, we have a long history with this motherfucker. And this dude wears long, long history. Pause. Pause. Yeah. Long. But he's like <laughs> extended, Very long. An extended history. And this dude wears so many hats. Like, you know, we were doing research on him and... I didn't really want to know this much about him, but I know a lot about him right now, even more than I care, care to know about this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, like, has done almost everything, you know, and tied it in with DJing, you know, in every almost every industry. He's one of Bay Area's finest. Been on the radio over 25 years now. The very hardworking DJ E-Rock is in the building. E-Rock, what's yes, good? Yes, sir. Fam? What's Pop good, sir? Yo, 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 What's good with you, man? It took some time. It took some time, man. It's dope, man. I know. How you feeling, man? How you feeling? I'm good, Can man. we get to know you? you, you Can know, we get like, to know like, you? Like I was saying, like after uh, after a long weekend, and you know, and, and, and maybe I can ask you guys this question, but after a long weekend of doing gigs and you get back home, like, you know, those two days after, are you guys like wiped now too? Like, you yeah, know, man. after like being like not on the road <clears> and not doing this rhythm for like 13 months or something like that? Like, yeah. I'm wiped right now. I'm, I'm like, well, I, I feel the it same way. Minute to bounce back, you know. I worked three straight days this past weekend, and I'm still. I was off yesterday, but I'm still feeling it, man. <laughs> yeah, like it even feels if like you a, drink or not, you know yeah. what I mean. So yeah. it feels like a full body workout, man. Like my feet hurt, my back, like my shoulders. You know what I mean? From slouching over DJing, like my whole shit is just sore for about a couple of days. It takes me a while to bounce back. Like I can't bounce back how I used to. I mean, well, crazy. everyone's barely conditioned for this lifestyle. Like, we've only been doing this a few months now, right? You know? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're like April, pre, pre-pandemic. You know? Yeah, pre-pandemic. It was basically, we were doing it for 10 to 15 years straight. It was, Non-stop. It was like a rat race. And then when it stopped abruptly, it's like like everything changed, you know? Like, we like even the way we take care of ourselves has changed. Like, And then we have yeah. to go back to this. I mean, we all kind of realized that we were kind of like destroying our bodies and like killing ourselves, right? <laughs> More than ever, I realize that now. Right. Seriously. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, sleep is kind you of know, a dope thing. Like, I didn't really appreciate sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, see, like, sleep. Really, rest? Oh, yeah. rest is underrated. <laughs> like, like, uh, yeah. There was like... There was like one time where I came back from doing like a series of gigs and then um, like I got back and I just couldn't bounce back. And I was just like tired like the whole week. And like, obviously, like, you know, we know that one of the symptoms of COVID is like, you know, fatigue. I was about to say that. Yeah. And so every time I have these like long weeks of just being tired, I'm like, man, I should go get a test and then I'll get a test and I'll do like an e-visit and stuff like that. Like my doctor would be like, yo, you're negative. I was like, then why am I so tired? It's like, yo, you you old as shit. That's why, you know. So, <laughs> hey, God, my doctor told me he's like, yo, you old, bro, you old man. If you, you you went away for fifteen months and you back at it, like, you know, I mean, it's not it's, it's not that you, your body has changed like dramatically since. So, yo, yo, you yeah, was man. just in uh, Lollapalooza, right? You was in Chicago, or you you did? A- I, I didn't I didn't go to the concert though. That's a little bit too much for me. But you yeah. know, I did do uh, an official after party over at Tau Chicago with Rowdy. Tau Chicago, so was, yeah, yeah. How was that yeah. with Rowdy Rich? It, it, it was a lot. It was probably. I mean, it's. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of us have played in Chicago, like on this, like, you know, on this pod, you know, Chicago's got like an energy right now that like, you know, we see how packed it is in Vegas. I would take that energy that we see in Vegas and probably like amplify it by twice in Chicago. Like it's like, it's jam packed. People are raging their faces off. It's like, you know, all this pent up energy from like literally being locked up in the house for like 14 months. Yeah. It's like, it's all coming out. So it's, it's like. Anytime I play in that room, it's just out of control. Always, always. Yeah. In a good way, though. In a good way, though. Now, I will say that Tau Chicago, when I've done it, it's it's probably some of the best energy in, in the country. I put it yes. up there. Like, it's it's that Las Vegas, Miami energy in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. And you don't, mm-hmm. you don't really encounter that shit often, but it was popping before the pandemic. So everything after, like, lockdown and everything this year, when everything kind of opened back up, it amplified like tripled, right? So the energy everywhere yeah. kind of tripled everywhere. 
So I can just imagine what happened in Chicago and whatnot, man. It's, so it's insanity out there everywhere you go, even like walking the streets. Like I remember, I remember like leaving my hotel just to go to Shake Shack, and it was like. It was like literally trying to weave through a dance floor, oh, it's like, like on the oh, sidewalk. Wow. Yeah, it's worse. Like, like the energy in Chicago is like out of control. Right I, w- I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to be in Ch- Chicago during Lollapalooza. Man. <laughs> I would not want to be. It, there, it's a lot. It's well. a lot. It's That's for much. sure. It's a lot. That so. airport must have been crazy. I don't like. I didn't want to. I Believe it or not, it actually wasn't because I came in on a Saturday. Oh, and I left on a Sunday. That's the best. So the, the festival's still going, but I can only imagine what it was like, like on like Monday, Monday morning. Dude, forget about it. Like yeah. you know, like you're, you know, you're 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 reliving the festival all over again, but in airport form. You know what I mean? So well, Iraq, Iraq, you and I have a long history. When I man, <laughs> I, I already know where you're going with this. I already know where you're going. with I don't this. know. There's so many ways I could go. Which, I don't know where to go. But the, 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 first, no, it, it's first probably time, one of the, the best stories time, of my career. The third well, time, it's because there's a there's a great ending to it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're we're here like 14, 15 years later. Yes, you know good friends and i'm giving them shit on text message going like you know you ever gonna hop on on war zone like you know i mean yeah. it, it was a you, you it was war- definitely I, I, i'll be honest it was like one of the first moments i ever had like like one of my first real true like vegas moments ever <laughs> ever that i'll always remember so the first Please time the picture the, the first time me and e-rock met right we were on the phone talking shit to each other like we had beef <laughs> Right? Wait, what? Hold on. What, yeah, you what, don't like, know this is real? Hey, oh, you guys don't know this story? No, so, like, no, you ever no. told you this story? I, no, I never knew this story. Me and Iraq were on the phone, and it was on some like, yo, like I don't, I don't fucking play like that either. He's like, I don't fucking play like that either, you know. So it was like us going back and forth, like, well, who the fuck? Are you? Well, who the fuck are you? You know. So, but this all started <laughs> because, and I, this is who I blame. I blame Josh D. <laughs> I blame Josh D. It, it, it wasn't even him though, you know. But so. I think, but. It was kind of him. So, like, basically, Josh D, he's a homie, actually. Like, you know, we love Josh D. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, Of course, man. It was in the like group, right? At the time, they, they had um, nightclub. Well, let, 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 let's say what year this is, though, just so people get the context of how long like, this, this date This had to be 2006. Six, seven? 2006. Yes. Yeah. Like, that's how long ago this was. It's, we, we, I mean, for those that don't know you under a rock, it's 2021, almost yeah. 2022. So, this is a long time ago. Yeah. A long so. time ago. This is like 15 years ago. Um, Light was open. Jet was open. They had E Rock do uh, a guest set at Light, did his fucking thing at Light. And then at the time, there's this, you know, magazine in vegas called the las vegas weekly you know we spoke last week that they actually gave us like a podcast award <laughs> you know what i'm saying Best congratulations on that by the way you it's, know? yeah thank you. thank you so thanks so basically at that time they had this like dj trading card that they would feature right in the magazine and it was like resident djs or blah blah, blah at the time i don't know the details of it but i think on E-Rock had a trading card and like not many DJs got on that trading card. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Crooked, why are you so mad about that? Wait, listen. <laughs> listen, listen. I so, think it was timing too, though. It was the timing of things as yeah, well. So. so listen, so listen. So E-Rock got in this trading card, right? And I was like, oh, like, all right, cool. Like, and then on the list, it was like residencies and it was like light, jet, and something else. And I was like, yo, he's never even spun at Jet or he's never even spun at this. It or never like, said Jet. It never said Jet. It said a- Light. It said Light. And then it said, um, what, what was the one? That, what was the club? Polyester's at uh, Stratosphere. Oh, okay. At the time, I, are you sure there wasn't Jet? There was like a club there that I, I'm never. I'm positive. Really? I don't think it was Jet. I don't think Jet it was. Definitely it definitely wasn't Jet. I know it was it, definitely Light. Okay, it was Light. So I think I was like, yo. I still, I, I have the trading card in my phone right now. Okay. And I had to dig that up for this conversation. <laughs> that might be the yes, cover right there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the cover. I knew you were going to bring this up. So. I think it even said body English too or something like that. So Yeah, yeah. So yeah. my whole thing was like, yo, this dude like did one date. It was a tryout date. And now he got a trading card. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is during the time when Josh D kind of brought you in. Now, you know, man, to be honest, man, Josh D had nothing to do with that date. Do you want to know who got me that day? I, I yeah. think I know it who took, it was. Go ahead. It took it took at least like six months to get it done, of demos, phone calls. It was Shecky Green that got me uh, that okay, day. Okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah, Shecky Green was, was the guy was that ushered night. me in. It was, it was a Andrew Sasson and got me booked. 
Got you know it. what? It was a Thursday night because I used to do you that. You opened for me. Yeah, I was, that was the party I was spinning every Thursday. Bounce, um, bounce. Bounce Thursdays. Bounce yeah. Thursdays, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. That was Shecky's party. That makes sense. Yeah, that yeah. was Shecky's yeah. party. So, I, you know, I've known Shecky for a long time, even before my Vegas days. I knew Shecky from game recordings. And remember when he had the Royce the 5'9 and Eminem record that was Star signed movies. to his label? I was like literally like one of the only dudes that really stepped out on that record when I was on KMEL back in like 1998, 99 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that's how long like I knew him. And then when I started like venturing into doing like open format clubs in San Francisco and kind of knowing like, you know, and understanding that like, oh, all right, those clubs transcend. It's like, you know, the bigger plays were just like, you know, the Vegas clubs, you know, or the uh, Atlantic City clubs, you know, someone had reminded me that Shecky lived in Vegas. And Shecky was like, you know, obviously responsible for bringing AM in and, 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 and introducing the city to all these acts. You know, I was young, so young at the time. So I, I, I had called him up out of nowhere. And I was like, yo, I don't know if you remember me, this and that. He said, dude, I totally remember you. And then we just kind of like, you know, threw around ideas for a long time. He would give me pointers like, all right, this is what you got to do, this and that. So, you know, sh shoot me your demo and then we'll figure it out. Bro, I probably shot him at least like six demos and like probably five of them weren't right. And then I had one that was right, you know, and actually DJ scene uh, helped coach me on on putting this demo together. Because at the time I was like the MTV Bay Area hyphy guy, you know, I, I was all over fucking sucker free. I, I used to do like four appearances a year yes. and just talk about like everything that was going on in the Bay Area or just West Coast hip hop at the time. Mm. But I knew I had to kind of figure out like okay how do i make this fit for vegas because like it was just too hip-hop like hip-hop on the strip didn't exist at the time really you know what i mean well i mean it's 2006 so it was like you know i had to like learn what i mean what, what did we call it back then i had to you know learn the open format game but back then we called it mashups i had to learn that game more than anything mm -hmm. so scene actually coached me to make that final demo and then that that was when shaq was like all right i can walk this in walks it in shoots me a date and that, that's actually my first like real vegas date ever one that was marketed whole entire nine man and that's kind of like you know how it, everything kind of started so okay so now i remember it was shecky it was, it was shecky. shecky right so hey yo my, so so my, this whole look, entire time wait. you were blaming josh for that argument this no, whole no, entire no. time it, 14 years bro <laughs> no no this is the thing is that i don't remember like i don't remember the details of it of like yeah. what happened like my memory is really bad you know what i'm saying but I can tell you what happened. You recap it for me, and then I'll just like I'll tell you my okay. side of the shit. You know what I'm saying? So you oh, you recap be great. it, this yeah? The best. Because nah, I'm, nah, the, this is the reason nah, why. He, he, here's but, where Josh was involved, and, and okay, God bless okay. Josh. Okay, you know okay. I love Josh. Yes. You know Josh introduced me to a lot of people in the city, though he uh, yeah. did a, a lot of people, and you know I'm forever grateful for that. But then, so I get a phone call from uh, the las vegas weekly right you know i'm doing a couple gigs like here and there around vegas i want to say it was uh hanya woodman was uh i don't know i i i don't know if it was my memory is bad in that aspect but i'm just building with her and i i threw out the idea about like hey like you know how how does one get a trading card and you know at that time the las vegas weekly trading card just like you said it was like a it was like a badge, you know what I'm saying? Like if you got that, like you you were something in the city, you know what I mean? Like the early guys that got it, you know, obviously yourself and Neva and uh, you know, Spider Vice, you know, like so like if you got this trading card, like yo, you were kind of like, you know, you were kind of like, yeah, it was it, it was it was a vouch, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and she said, well, you know, you got to play in town and this and that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, you know, I've got a, you know, a gig here and I've got a gig there, you know, and 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 that was it. The trading card comes out, you know, fast forward, and it's got like, you know, uh, the residency aspect. It says where I'm from and says my little bio, all that other stuff. This card comes out and I get a phone call from my brother, Josh D. And Josh like, yo, what did you do? I'm like, I didn't do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, when, you know, Crooked's calling me. He's mad that you got this, this card. <laughs> it says X, Y, and Z on it. I'm like, man, are you serious? Why? But I didn't even really think it was that big of a deal until I spoke with Crooked. And I started understanding. But that was the moment where I understand how how deep local culture in Vegas and how important it is, you know, to understand that more than anything. 
And I told Josh, like, you know what, man? Just give him my phone number. Or I'll call him, and, and, and we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm not going to hide from this shit. Because I knew I wanted to be in the, you know, in the city. Yeah. I knew I respected everybody that came you know, in the city before me. Mm-hmm. And when I called Crooked, bro, I remember, bro, that you were so upset with me. Like, yo, you had this tone. Like, yo, what's up? I was like, yo, what's good? And then, yeah, we weren't talking shit. I think it was just more things where we were kind of like standing on our ground. And he was explaining to me how the trading card is like a vouch. It was such a it was a big deal back then. And you you even mentioned like, yo, they're giving these trading cards out to people that only played in the city once this and that. And I remember I told you, I was like, yo, bro, like, I'm not trying to rock the boat here. I'm really trying to spend some time here. Like, you know, like, like, and I didn't back down from anything you said. And I understood everything we had. I want to say it was probably the most grown conversation I've probably had because if anybody else would have came at me like that as of recently, I would have fucking lost my shit. But, you know, I understood where you were coming from more than anything because you were telling me like, you know, how, 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 how important it is to understand local culture and how the locals bust they ass for something like that. And locals that have been busting their ass haven't seen that type of love yet. But then I come in and get it. I'm like, yo, I get it. I understand it. So, but then I, I don't know. Yeah. I think there was a time where where, where you said, well, I ain't about no punk shit. I said, well, I ain't about no punk shit either. Well, that's I, why I'm I here. I, <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's why I'm here. That, you know, but I didn't hang up the phone. I didn't, it wait, didn't get tense. <laughs> it was a very wait. diplomatic conversation. No, no. Obviously, wait. you know, we, we still friends, so it couldn't have been that bad, you know? So So wait. So the whole thing was this is that when his like when his like when his card came out, his trading card came out, like he did one date in Vegas. Do you know what I'm saying? This is my knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like he did one date. Anything about this body English shit or whatever, everyone knows his one date came from light. So for me, I was like, yo, there's fucking resident DJs here who kill this shit and they don't even get a trading card. So that was my I, thing. I, I, that I was think... literally my shit. Like, who the fuck course, finessed and this? And I understood it. And, and, this, and then I was like, oh, someone's lying here and someone finessed this shit. And like, <laughs> that was my shit. And I'm like, yo, I don't oh, like yeah, this dude. Like, I mean, this dude, it basically took one date and he like, he just finessed it into this whole thing. And I'm like, yo, I understand motherfuckers want to come to Vegas and they want to do this. They, they want to do this thing. But it was just like, for me, I was like, yo, someone's lying and someone's finessing some shit because this motherfucker literally had one date. So yeah, no, no, that, I, that I, was I, literally, and I understood it. That was my but take. That, and that, that was, was the moment. T- that was the only reason why I tied it to Josh D's because you guys knew each other prior. So I'm like, yo, what? And I remember telling him like, yo, what's up? Oh, with he had nothing boy? to do with it. So, I know. yo, yo, if, if this is clearing his name 14 years later, yeah, <laughs> he had nothing no, to no, do with you it know why? All. You know why I say this is because at the time, Josh D brought scene in, right? And then yeah. I know I've brought this up way, way in the past, but there was this one night where I DJed, and like Drew Barrymore was there, Cameron Diaz was there, like all these celebrities were there. And I, I, didn't, think, I think I heard the pod about that. Yeah. yeah. And then basically with D, I was DJing and they were dancing in the booth and I didn't know who it was them, but there were just like these white girls dancing around me in the booth, giving me shots. And then later they were like, yo, you know, that was Cameron Diaz and Drew Barrymore. I was like, no. Then they got a call to the club at Jet. I was at Jet that night. And then they were just like, yo, uh, Drew Barrymore wants that DJ who was working to do her Halloween party. I don't know what the fuck. And then Josh D was like, oh yeah, it was seen, you know? And gave it to scene. And I was just like, yo, what the... F-? And then, like, I found out about it later. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, that was just, like, flagrant to me. He's like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. And then this shit came up. That's when I just called Josh. Like, yo, what, what, what is, like... What's this new funny shit you doing now with E-Rod? Like, what is this shit? Like, this dude had one date and he got a trade card? <laughs> yeah, but it had nothing to do with him. So, yo, now I feel really bad that, nah, it's that all you good. called it just berated but him. But I, like, I will tell you this. I, unfortunately, after your trading card... We just we we didn't we didn't respect that shit no more. <laughs> <laughs> so you rock was it down so of the E-Rock, trading E-Rock cards. literally like he oh, just you oh, know oh E Rock got a card that's it man we out man. after the E Rock uh, card out it's played out it was just like man yo it was like yo they give E Rock getting the cards like everyone wearing British Knights and yeah, K Swiss <laughs> now man fuck. It was Kirk was like the gatekeeper of shit out there. I wasn't no gatekeeper but I was like yo it seemed like you are like bullying people. Hey, 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 I got to agree with Jamie. Like, 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 yo, there was a time where, like, yo, a lot of motherfuckers 
should not and still can't or still shouldn't piss you off, though. I mean, oh, fee, fi, fo. it's not even <laughs> fam. It's not even about like pissing me off. I just have like a low tolerance for like just funny, funny ass shit. shit, just funny shit, you know, and then like, yeah. you know, like I just don't deal with that shit. So like obviously when I was younger, fifteen years ago, like I would just react. Whereas now yeah. I would I wouldn't you know I wouldn't I wouldn't react initially. I would just be like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know what though, I, I, you know for for people I, I, that are listening is like I think one of the best things that I learned about it, you know, the takeaways from that was a, like I really understood what like what the, the importance of local culture was. And after that phone call, like I made it like, you know, a, a, a very big priority to spend time in the town because I didn't want a look like that to diminish, like, you know, any possible, not only opportunity, but just even like, you know, someone, how someone could perceive me because, you know, I feel like, you know, like I'm a very positive guy and, you know, I always put my hand out to help, you know, but, yeah, yeah. but you know, that, you know, that, that could have been, that, 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 that can easily be buried under like, you know, a situation like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, shit, 14 years later, like, yo, I'm still fucking spending time in the city. You know what I'm saying? I bought a house out there not too long ago. You know what I mean? Just to be, I mean, because I, I, I feel like, yo, I feel more at home in Vegas than I do in the Bay Area now, which is crazy. That's how much time that I've, I've, I've managed to spend since that phone call. You know, but that was the phone call. Yo, I, I ain't going to lie to you. Like, yo, they kind of had me spooked. I was like, shit, if I don't understand fucking how the locals work, in Vegas, they're gonna run me out of town because you were you you are obviously a local <laughs> before me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, I gotta understand this shit a little bit better. It's funny, it's funny because everyone's like, yo, crooked wilding out over, over a trading card in a in a in a Las Vegas weekly magazine. But yo, this shit was kind of a big deal back then, yo. It but, was. Yeah. That was a huge <laughs> deal. Huge deal. Yeah. Like it was a big huge deal. deal. Hold on, by the way, Crooked only lived in Vegas for like one year at that time. <laughs> and he was like the gay He was people. already claiming local. <laughs> no, I'm just like, you know what it was? It's like it's I brought this East Coast New York attitude to the West Coast. Do you understand what I'm saying? Cause that's just how it was in New oh, York. Yeah. Like, if someone did something funny, you just check them. Like, yo, that was funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, that wasn't right. And you just say it, but like on the West Coast, it's different, you know. Like, well, I, no, I, no. In my defense, I was offered that card and I took it. Yeah, but you, that's, I'm so, telling you, know, obviously after, for me, after you took wanting it, wanting to get into the city, yeah. Like, yo, anybody that is, that 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 is aspiring to do what we do for the last like you know decade and a half plus, you know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? They would have done the same thing. They would have been like, yo, yes, I would love to be in a magazine. Who? Who not? You tell me one young person now that would that would say no to that. And that's and that's that when look. and that's when and no that, one, if that still that, existed and had valid validity. And that's when no one cared about the cards no more. They were like, "Yo, e got that shit." <laughs> <laughs> All right, I fucked up the trading card game. My, my bad. It, it could have been. It could have still been going on. And you just destroyed the legacy. How long? Was <laughs> you? He crashed. He crashed the market. Jesus. I remember, like, I think it was like, um, it was the MySpace era. So when yeah, oh, so like wild. when you had the trading card, that was like on your main page kind of shit, you know, like yo Vegas. Boom. Some DJs had right? it as their profile pic. Right, it was a big deal. Like in my <laughs> it was space, a big deal. So when you got that, you're like, yo, you this motherfucker in Vegas, he's doing that shit. And then it was like, E Rock got it. Like, oh man, he, everybody got hey, this man, shit. I, ain't got that that. Hey, I, I got bullied. And it, the reason why that argument <laughs> happens because I got bullied into crooked being on my top eight. So you know, nah, nah, nah. nah. Damn! <laughs> I'll say that shit. Double wh- That's a double whammy for that one, bro. <laughs> he was no, on my no. top eight for like at least like ten years after yeah. that, man. But he still is. By the way, I I, I feel like uh, I you know like it wasn't all Josh D's fault, uh, and you know me and Josh D it wasn't cool. his fault at all. Yeah, it wasn't at his fault. But there was just like weird shit that was happening at the time. Timing well, played a big yeah. a big part in that. I swear, I think that something else must have happened to me where I got I got I got fucked with somehow. And I just snapped with whatever. It was like, you never. You remember that time, man? Like, it was just. I felt like they were fucking with. Remember, they were kind of fucking with us a lot, bro. Like there was a. We get like one week. We'd be like, yo, you can't play reggae, and they'd be like, yo, yeah. uh, yo, you can't drink. Like DJs can't drink. Like you mm-hmm. know, like, it was like nonstop. It was like nonstop fucking was, with like shit. Yeah, it was. It was like, a lot of stress and emotion for you going on, bud. 
Well, you I know, just I honest, just moved out Vegas there. I just then, moved out there. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. I'm 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 getting uh is it acclimated? I'm getting like Yeah, I'm acclimated. <laughs> You're settling in. I'm settling, You're settling in. in. I'm like so yo. You still learn in Vegas. Yeah. But you know what though? And 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 and, and I will I will say this though. Vegas then was way more stressful than it is with Vegas today. Like yo, like you know, if we think about the amount of hip hop that we can play today like yo i remember you know coming into rooms like you know back in the day like even like 2009 and being told like yo you could play 10 minutes of hip-hop and the rest all house music i'm like all right shit you know what i'm saying like it, yo, vegas back then was stressful it was stressful because like know. yo it like, was a lot of pressure man you were, know they were pretty open to hip-hop back then man like it was they, like hip-hop was was doing well over there. You just had to mix it up with rock and shit at the time. You know <laughs> See what I'm saying? saying? Like, no, but it was still like you yeah, could, but, but you yeah, could... that that wasn't my forte at the time. Yeah. Like, yo, I I probably had never played like you know a, a Papa Roach record in my life. Like until I came to Vegas, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I didn't understand the importance of that or or just even how to program a room. Like, yo, I mean, I like I said, I, I came over to Vegas in 2006, 2007. Like, you know, doing rooms, but I was like the Bay Area hyphy guy. I was playing fucking oh. Mac Dre, you know, Tell Me When to Go, you know, all these other records that weren't fully accepted on the strip just yet. You know what I'm saying? But when I went when I would come and hang out and see what you guys did at Jet and see how you guys would weave these records in, I started understanding, okay, like you could play these records, but it's really all about the framing. Like, like if you're gonna play a super hyphy, which was like the big record, like back home at, during my time, like when I came to Vegas, like, yo, you got to back it up with, you know, an Aerosmith or something like that. You know, back then in 2006, that was what we had to do, right? It's yeah, true. What did I play? What did I play? You tried to call me out. I was like, yo, wow, why are you in leave the E40 part? <laughs> I was, yo. Um, <laughs> now you played uh, Little John, uh, Snap Your Fingers, and you cut the E40 verse out. You was mad. I'm like, damn, it ain't that serious, man. <laughs> That that that's how that that's how that, I mean you know I was Wait, young. I, he has I, a I was on my high key horse. Yeah, what? straight from the bay. Like that that second verse, it starts off like that. I didn't even know he had a verse on that. Yeah. Damn, yeah. you are young. Yo, you don't need to play the U forty verse. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, bro, I grew up bro. with that shit, and I saw I'm like, there was a verse of him in there. I didn't remember. Yeah, that. he got that second verse, man. Yo, E forty is the goat, but you don't need to play his verse on that song or. But that was a huge nah, record. Nah, you could. I, 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 I play every E40. Well, I don't fuck with you. Or Big Chong, yeah. You don't need to play his verse. <laughs> no, I like that. I, I, oh, I, I never <laughs> skip it. And that's that. You know that that's the Bay Area. No, me, I, so. I, I, I respect E40 like a motherfucker. Like, he kills a lot of records. He's fuck, But those are some of the two songs that you don't have to play his verse on, unfortunately. But I mean that that I mean that but but that's that that that's coming from you, which has you have a strong like East Coast mentality. So, you know, I, I I think if you're from the West Coast, you always got to play. You always do. Okay. Why did you turn on the echo? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Oh, shit. The timing, was, the timing was crazy <laughs> on that. <laughs> not Damn. Not bad. Wait, can we can we talk about how whenever I would DJ in, in the Bay in San Francisco in the 2000s at that time, hyphy was banned? Like, that you couldn't play really? hyphy anywhere. Yeah, you couldn't because, it, it you know, the the... At the time, are you talking about the times that I brought you out over at like 2008, 2009? Even when, uh, when was, anytime I did San Francisco or the the Bay Area, I never DJed in Oakland, but like San Jose, like yeah. no high feet. It was like, it's like, it was literally on my itinerary, like on my, so, if I get an itinerary for where I'm DJing, what time I got to start, who's the contact person, here's the yeah. notes. No hyphy, and then I would get there, and they'd be like, "Don't no, don't play any hyphy." Like you know, would, what's crazy was, like, was is this that, at the height of hyphy, like oh six? Yeah, no? probably yeah. At the height of hyphy, like you know, there was a time where, like you know, like like, like hyphy was literally like something that that you know, it's a, it's a way of life in the Bay Area where you're just constantly pushing the envelope on anything and everything, good or bad. You know, stomping on cars, tearing the club up, you know what I'm saying? Just going ape shit. You know, that was like literally like hyphy. You know, that that was what it was, you know. And that and to be honest, man, there were there were even a lot of clubs where I couldn't even play at for a long time ago because I was known as like the Bay Area Hyphy guy for a long time. Um, you know, the MTV look changed that, you know, which which I think is terrible to even think of because, you know, I was still 
showcased as like you know the hyphy guy on MTV. I didn't know you but, was on MTV. You, yeah, right. MTV, I was on MTV, MTV, MTV mm-hmm. two, right? That's how I got into Vegas. <laughs> Wait, no, MTV MTV, no, I was on MTV two. <laughs> I was, on, I was on I'm Sucker not, Free, not. and I was on I'm like not. two or three. It was Sucker years. Free Sundays, right? But yeah. I was on MTV Cypher too, Sounds. right? Cypher Sounds. Yeah. But I'm and, and, and that came that came about because of my relationship with Who Kid. Who Kid was faithfully on that show like all the time. You know, right. he was like the guy that, that they called all the time and said, "Yo, we need someone to talk about all this fifty shit going on." So, me and Who Kid at the time, two thousand six, we had a strong relationship because he came to the Bay Area one time. And, you know, I mean, you ask him this, it, it's, you know, it, 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 he still tells the story spot on. Um, he came to the Bay Area one time and he did one of the most gutter fucking hyphy clubs ever. Right. And he heard something like, yo, I heard that I cannot come to this club unless I got unless I play, you know, your guys is shit. And the Bay is really big on supporting their own. Yes. And especially during that time, like, we finally had an identity to really latch on to. Like, you know, like, the Bay never really had, like, you know, like, like I, I, I wanted, I mean, the Bay's never really gotten its full respect when it comes down to rap music, you know? So at that time, like, you know, when Who Kid called me, he had someone else call me and then he put me in touch with him. I had to burn a CD. That's how long ago this shit was. I had to burn a CD of all the hyphy joints in the world. It's like 20 cuts on this shit. I think that's all you could fit back then. I drove this shit to that club and I gave it to him. I gave him two CDs and that's all he played that night. And fucking ever since then, Who Kid has held me in high regard going like, you know what, man? I fuck with you. Like, because like, yo, if you were to, you know, go into that club, you know, obviously not playing Bay Area shit at the height of where Bay Area shit was so fucking huge. It was all over MTV. Little John was back in it. You know what I'm saying? Too Short had Blow the Whistle. You know, fucking Keek had super high feet. I mean, yo, he probably would have got drinks thrown at him and everything. That's that's real fact. That's real fact, you know, because... Mm-hmm. You know, you don't pay respect to the soil. That's just that's just what the soil will do. That was a weird time. That was when they were actually having like public service, an, like announcement commercials, like don't ghost ride Side the whip. shows and shit. No, but they were like, don't ghost ride the whip. That's dangerous. Remember, yep. like they used to have like <laughs> <laughs> it was like, crazy. It, it was, was on, nuts. It was on the news, like in California, right, or some shit. Like, yeah. please, please do not ghost ride the whip, or like you it know, it is dangerous. <laughs> it still is fucking dangerous. People were like you know? dying because of that shit. Like, right? They were trying yeah, to... Yeah, because they get taken out when they swing the car. Yeah, yeah. So they could just wipe people so, out. So the MTV look came to me by luck one day. Who Kid calls me. And Who Kid's like, yo, I can't make it to MTV Sucker Free. Can you help me out and fill in for me? I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking he's fucking joking around with me. I'm thinking, like, yo, he's fucking playing around the whole entire time. He's like, nah, like... You know, they want me to go in, but I can't make it. You know, I got to be like, I think he said like some shit like I got to be in Dubai or something like that. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll go book my flight, everything. And it was actually real. Like, I remember walking into the studios in Times Square and I'll, I'll send you the, the, the thing. But I was nervous as shit, man. And literally <laughs> Cypher Sounds was just asking me questions just about Bay Area hip hop forever, but that was like a big thing for God bless Cipher Sounds, for, not just Cypher. me, but just like for yeah. the Bay in general. Yeah, and you and Who Kid did a couple of mixtapes together as well, right? And, and that was the reason why, because we, you know, we had like we we've done like probably like four or five mixtapes together, and yeah. and we had I want to say it was Bay Business One, mm-hmm. like that title, <laughs> Bay Business, and then we actually did about a good like four of them. Yeah, I saw that. And, and That's Bay not Bidness. the first time I actually heard of you from that mixtape. Yeah, you know, and yo, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know, between that and Vegas and radio, like, you know, that really kind of like, you know, changed my life right there. So, yo, how do you keep up with so many relationships, bro? <laughs> like, you are like cool with every fucking body, and that, I just think it's. I wouldn't like, say everybody, everybody. I mean, there's a few people that don't like me, you know, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But I think like, who doesn't like you, Iraq? Yeah, for real. This <laughs> is <laughs> a conversation, man. We could probably start a whole new podcast off of that. <laughs> Who doesn't like you on podcast? Nah, you know, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, one of the big things that I've learned in the business is just like, you know what, man, like, like before being a, a, a good DJ, a good programmer in radio, a good mixtape guy, a good anything, you got to be a good person. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, that's going to go further than anything, not just in this business, but in this world. 
you know, and, and that's something that I've really like, you know, held on to. And then that, you know, just to kind of like, you know, scoop back a little bit, like that was the reason why, like, you know, I hopped on the phone with Crooked, you know, because of the trading card thing. Like I didn't want him to ever think that, <laughs> that, that there was something shady or conniving about me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I never hide from anything. And now I, I remember saying that. I was like, yo, I'm not hiding from nothing. I want you to, to, to understand like, yo, like, like, I'm here. I'm a good person, and and I'm willing to learn. You know, take the time and understand things a little bit better. But and that's for, for the record, that, that really he didn't like say any of this shit on the phone with me. He didn't say any of this shit. I want to learn. <laughs> I did oh, no. say that yo, shit. I, I want to learn say that shit on the phone. You said your memory's like, bad, so yo, man, yeah, like, like, hey, <laughs> well, yeah, your memory is bad right now, bro. I said that shit on the phone. I did say I was like, yo, I don't hide from anything. And I one, want you to understand that I'm a good point, person. That's why I'm here. At one point on the phone, we would we did get to a point where like, yo, like we could see, like we could handle this shit in person like on some no shit. way I, it was like that. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think we did but like like i, I was so determined was to i i remember like you know like my, my, my for... demeanor going into the thing like all right i'm gonna stand my ground but at the same time like you know i want to make sure that that i diffuse this situation to the best that i we, can we was ready to box for las vegas trading card man for real <laughs> <laughs> you were ready to box man like yo like I already had a lot of shit like 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 already like stressing me out at the time. I just didn't want this extra thing because I knew, like I said, I I knew at some point that that I mean I, at that point, man, I really wanted to be like you know a Las Vegas resident DJ that bad. You know what I'm saying? Like we know that we know we know we know that. Yeah, like you wanted but no, to. I took the time out to just really you yeah, know yeah. to smooth out the relationship. Just like you know, hey, if you move into a hood, you know what I'm saying? You gotta you 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 gotta make good with all the turf bosses. But you is how it is. Erot. You know what I love about you though is that you make things happen, and you do it, and you do it, and you make shit happen. You do it your way, so you know what I'm saying. Like I appreciate you on a hustler level. I I I really really commend you, and um, like I'm just like yo, this dude always makes it happen. He'll make it happen, you know. And it's one of those things that I really really do respect about you. Do you know what I'm saying? And Likewise, I, brother. And, and throughout the years, I've noticed it. Like wow, this this dude stays busy. You know, always to the point where like. You know, when I'm when I link up with motherfuckers and I see motherfuckers and you meet them, you're like, yo, how you doing? Like, how's everything been? Every time I see you, you was exhausted. You know, you're like, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. You know, like and you, yeah. you're always uh, you're always running. I'm still on. tired, bro. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> but even this is back then. You was, you know, you I, we haven't even gotten to everything that you be doing and shit. At one point, you were like really running on fumes. I remember you were like yeah. really going hard in the club. You was on fumes, and I was like, "Yo, man, you gotta take care of your fucking, you gotta take care of your shit. Like, you going, you going too hard, body." I, I want to say that was around the time when I did, uh, when I was doing haze, man, and yeah. and that yeah. was like the first, that was like my first really like big break into the city. Like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was a brand new nightclub. You know, I was fully marketed. You know, that was like my first real residency. Like, I should have got a trading card for that. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> that I was there every day. <clears throat> Like I was there literally like Friday and Saturday doing like six seven hour yeah. sets. Hayes opened up with the opening of Aria, right? Yeah, the opening of uh, yeah. Aria, and I I want to say that Usher and like I think it was Usher and Drake did like the opening parties or something like that. That was like one of the first times where 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 I got to play like a lot of hip hop. Yeah, the first time I ever saw a hip hop act in Vegas was that Hayes. Me and Jamie was there when they had J Cole. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think that was 2010, Jamie. Yeah, November 2010. Yeah. So you was probably there that night, E Rock. Uh, no, yeah, no, I, was I was probably I was there, DJing there that night. Oh, it was shit. never. It was never. <laughs> My bad, man. <laughs> I, there's so many nights, man. But but you know, to to crooked point, you know, to crooked's point, you know, I mean, I, like that was like the first time where like I was like I was always running on fumes because obviously, like you know, when when you get your like your first like real like big break in the city, like you know, you don't want to like ever turn down a drink. You don't ever want to not say hi to nobody. Like if somebody, and I didn't, I learned this the hard way actually back then was like, yo, like I didn't, I didn't understand like, yo, there's always somebody in town back then. Anytime that like, literally like I would be in Vegas and I would find out someone's in town, like, yo, I would just get completely drunk and blacked out. I mean, you do that like, you know, three times a week, like, you know, in Vegas, and that's a whole different other type of animal when it comes to drinking. Plus all the nightclub shit I was doing in San Francisco at the time, like yo, I I, I learned the hard way and I actually burnt out around that time. I, I remember that time because it was like the tables turned. Other DJs were hating on you because you were you got these haze dates, and because at the time I remember you you were like DJing for like the San Francisco Giants, 
and that they, they won yeah, the world. I, I was the Giants guy. Yeah, yeah. They won the World Series, and then they, you know, there started being like San Francisco Giants after party at Hayes and all of the shit. And there was these DJs that was hating, so the tables were actually turning. And I was like, actually defending you to some of these DJs who were hating on you, who was like, man, he's just he's just finessing these gigs at Hayes because of his San Francisco Giants connection and all of this shit at the time. But I was like, yo, man, if he's the San Francisco Giants DJ. And if he could bring that shit to the club, like, I, I know e, e Rock's been doing this since 06 <laughs> in Vegas. <laughs> you know? look and at, by the way, the, 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 look the, at the Giants were hot. Yeah, the Giants were so hot at that time. Yeah. They're winning like a well, World Series every other year. Yeah, right. Every so, other, it, it was yeah. even year energy. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And, it was, and, and, and I was like, yo, you know, he, he kind of earned his, earned his position right now. He's in a, in a position where he can shine and do it. And he has uh, the contacts and he has people, you know, like he can bring – San Francisco Giants to his gigs in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Well, to pop bottles and hang and do all of these. He things. was bringing Kaepernick to the club before yeah. all that shit went down with right. Kaepernick. Yeah, so yeah, like, man. So for for me, I was like actually set, telling motherfuckers like, yo, like you know, he, that it was like a, a different time at that. But I remember a lot of DJs were were hating on you, especially like when they won the championship. Yeah, when yeah. the 49ers won. Oh man, this nigga Ewok will be showing off. <laughs> His, his <laughs> ring, he'll be bragging about. No, you know what's crazy? <laughs> when, when, yeah, every time that I mean, there was a time where San Francisco sports was just like so, like it was just on fire. Yeah. And, and, and crooked, you remember when I used to book you at Infusion, which is something yeah. that that I used to my advantage, obviously in Vegas. It wasn't just the fact that I was, you know, running a nightclub. It was the fact that, like, yo, like I made these contacts because, like, yo, like Monday through Thursday in the Bay Area, I would literally be out and about. I would do, I would DJ these games, but I would all also DJ my own club, and 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 throw like you know San Francisco Giants after parties and this and that, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I built this huge like base of just Giants fans and Giants players, you know, to where I be just kind of became like their Vegas authority because they like I just so happened to play in Vegas. On like a Saturday yeah, yeah. or something like that, and they would be like, "Yo, like on the off season, we're yo, we, we coming with you." I'm like, "All right, shit, you know, I'm I'm in." So like that, but that that was the time where like you know when Brian Wilson was hot, when Sergio Romo was through, like you know, was like you know like the fear the beard thing was like so big, and those guys were with me all the time, or like even like what Crooked said, like you know when the Niners started getting hot, like I've known Cap before. Cap was even Cap, really. Like, you know, Cap was, I met him at a club. I met him actually through um, uh, Julia Jeffers in Reno. Reno. And he, you know, he went to school in Reno. And I met him, like, when he was just literally, I mean, dude, he was he was a stats guy. Like, he was on, he was like, you know, he had the, 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 the earpiece in, like, learning from Alex Smith at the time. He wasn't even starting yet. Like, and I met him, and I just showed him love. So I was like, yo, man, like, I'm from the Bay. You're from the Bay. You know, like, I'm a big San Francisco 49er fan. Like, do you want to drink? Yeah, sure. But that went a long way to where literally when he reached his stardom, like, you know, and he always knew that I was in Vegas. Like, he would always just come out with me, him and, like, three other players. And so, you know, I used that to my advantage, not necessarily to get booked, even to just kind of further, like, you know, the, the, the bigger picture of the venue. You know, like, I had so many things in my wheelhouse that I knew that I could make, like, you know, Hayes, like I mean, every anytime Kaepernick ste stepped into Hayes, like yo, it, it hit the press all the time. It was it was good. It was like good synergy, like all of these things that you kind of timing. Put, yeah, it was well, yeah, timing synergy because everything that you got you were working on was kind of coming together and, and working together. You know, at the same yeah. time. Uh, so let's talk about Infusion because I feel like Infusion in in the Bay in San Francisco might be like an era of. You know, nightlife that people, the motherfuckers don't really remember or or understand or even know about. If we if we talk about some of the man, some of the younger gen DJs won't even really maybe know about Infusion in San Francisco and stuff. That like was that. a staple. That was a staple in the city. It, 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 it was definitely a staple. Um, you know, rest in peace, Chris Rosas, who was the uh, the mm. creator and the owner. I mean, it, to be honest, like I wouldn't even be on this podcast today if. Uh, if, um, you know, he never gave me my shot to, you know, to not only book the entertainment, but even like, you know, control a lot of the marketing. Uh, Infusion was just like, just like you guys said, it was a staple in the city. And I remember getting on board like around like 2008. And um, actually, I got that job by accident. I, I was booked there to play like, you know, around grand opening weekend. They had a guy that was booking entertainment and he had like a huge falling out with like the owners. Um, I don't know what that conversation sound like, nor is it my business, 
But what happened was that when he got fired, all the open format guys, like, you know, in our scene were calling me going like, yo, who's the contact there? Who do we talk to? Like, we have no idea, like, how to even, like, you know, advance these bookings. We have, we, have, we don't even know, we don't, we don't know nothing. It's just been in the dark. And so I remember going up to Chris and, and the, uh, the general manager, Scott, at the time. Uh, yeah, you remember Scott really well? He, yeah, like, yeah. He, always, he always told you, like, yo, Crooked, hey, we need, we need hey, make him bounce. Make him bounce. <laughs> That's a, that yeah, was his that's line. So dope. I remember going to them at that time, and I was like, "Yo, man, everyone's calling me from like five to Kevin Scott to, like, these are all my friends. Like, yo, do you want me to help you kind of organize this? I, I, dude, I didn't have one, like, administrative bone in my body at the time. You know, I was still the Bay Area hyphy guy wearing Forty Nine er jerseys, screaming ye in the streets, and fucking wanting to play. Tell me when to go in every fucking nightclub I played in that time." And then he was like, yeah, sure. Gave me that chance. Remember, I got paid, like, I think at the first, like, my first check was like 900 bucks for like a whole month of work or something like that. You know, I, I, I had to pay my dues. And I was totally fine with that. During that time, I was also in Vegas. Everything that I saw in Vegas, everything that I saw, like, at Hayes or at Jet at the time or at, at, at I, I want to say, what, what was it still light? No, it was the bank, right? Any, any, anything that bank. I saw, yeah, anything that I saw, saw like, you know, in these Vegas nightclubs, I would come back to San Francisco and I would be like, yo, this is the shit that we need to do. This is the shit that I'm seeing in Vegas. This is the stuff that's like making people like, you know, go crazy in the club right now. This is the music we got to play. This is, these are the DJs we got to book. You know, we made it a point to become like a little piece of Vegas in the middle of San Francisco without hopping on the plane. And, you know, we tried as hard as possible to make sure that we can accomplish that. You know, we booked Crooked. You know, Neva, did you ever play there at all? I don't know. A if couple you of did. times, yeah. I don't know yeah, if you, you, I don't think you booked me, but I did play there. <laughs> probably play, <laughs> probably play, yeah, I eventually got play for, for, just, for Justin, probably for Justin Zox, <laughs> probably because he took my job yeah. after I left. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, you know, that that was like kind of like our goal, and like, yo, we had like a crazy run, and like timing played such a great part in that where we were winning playoff game like san francisco sports was just on fire and we would host all these people all these athletes and we would even host all the all, all the opposing teams on the same mm -hmm. night like if the marlins played like you know the the giants i would have half the giants in there and i would have half the marlins in there like at the same time you know what I mean? And I would just build my, my contact, you know, my, my, my database, you know, and just host these guys over and over and over again every time they came to town. And then, like, I I, I left, I think, uh, I don't know, when did I leave? I was there for, like, six to seven years, and then I left, and then I joined forces with with Josh D, and then we we uh, we rebranded and helped reopen Temple. Moose was a part of that project, too. Yeah, yeah. shout to Moose. Yeah, yeah so. <clears throat> that was the, that but, was the, uh, that was the next stage, which was the Temple San Francisco. That's yeah. That's uh. Thankfully, it it's open now. To it's know. open now, man. You know, I mean, we're we're talking about you know me. I, I guess coming back home. Um, obviously, home for me would be Infusion because that's like you know kind of things started for me in two thousand eight. Like mm -hmm. you know for this journey to Vegas, but it's, it's no longer there anymore. You know, um, there's a there, there's a, a Korean steakhouse by Kira Back. That's gonna open in there, in, in infusion, in, in in the infusion space, and wow. it's like uh, from what I hear, it's almost done. So shout out to Kira back. Mm. Lots of great nights with that guy, man. I'm sure you guys had that too. I love that guy. Yo, my my favorite shit about coming to San Francisco to DJ at Infusion was going to Non and Curry. After you remember that? Oh it was a, God! So there was so like a few. It's blocks a halal guys now. Is it? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Well, at least. I haven't lived there in close to five years now. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know. so in in San Francisco, where Infusion was, like three blocks away, I don't know, like not not that far away, there was a twenty four hour Indian spot that mm -hmm. we would go to, like right after we DJ, and we'd be like, we be we just be like insanely drunk, going to this Indian spot, and it would be so, most drunkest I think I've ever been in my life. And it was sure. it was it was so turned at this spot, like everybody came to Non and Curry. At, like after the club and it was it would yeah. just be crazy but it was like the go-to like whenever everyone was in san francisco they'd be like yo let's meet non and curry non and curry and whatnot let's go let's go let's go and i do you do you remember that one night where see my memory's fucked up but in my memory i think 
You you started some shit or I did not start. I don't. I do trust me. It was not me. Hey, <laughs> hey, you see you see what this guy is doing right now, man? Like yo, it was not me starting. I you know I I never started shit in my own city. <laughs> Some, something happened. Something happened. I remember that. You remember you that? smacked somebody, I remember, right? <laughs> I, he Jesus smacked somebody. <laughs> no, no, no. He did. And I was like, yo, chill out, chill out, chill out. And I remember I had to talk to dude off a ledge or something like that. Who was it? He smacked. No, no, I don't, no. I, I don't remember, but I, mean, I think DJ? I seen no, him. No, no, no. He's not. He did something to you, and I was like, yo, like, back the fuck up or some shit, right? It, it was definitely something nah, like nah, that. Nah, nah, nah. You know what it was? He was too close to us in line, and he wouldn't back up. That's is, what it was. Is that what happened? That's what I remember. So y'all didn't know this person? No, we didn't know this person oh, okay. at all. But yeah, I think yeah, I seen yeah. him like years down the line, though. You did? So. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> he didn't say that. I don't know. <laughs> See, I know what, what it was. Like, yo, he was like, he was like really too close to us in the line. And I think like at the time, like, yo, like, like, you know, there was a lot of people with us. We took like, you know, all of our friends there. So there was a lot of girls and the girls felt very uncomfortable, I think, about it. And then... We were just like, yo, back up, back up. Like, you know, it was kind of creepy, like how close this dude was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was he drunk or no? Probably, oh, yeah. yeah. We, we, everyone dude, everyone, un, dude, everyone there was drunk. drunk. We, were, we were completely smashed. No, no, no. Was the guy drunk? <laughs> yeah. Oh, probably. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Who, okay, who, who, okay, okay. Come on. You know, this is like 3 a.m. in the morning, bro. Like, you know, like this is this is late at night. He, this guy was like so uncomfortably close to us and stuff. And yeah, you know, crooked. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he he, he smacked him, though. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't like it wasn't like a, it wasn't like those, those smacks you see like on social media where it's like, dude, just gets knocked out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like if you ever, it was like literally like it was like this part and just like like, you know, like it was a good check in. Dude was like. Holy shit, dude! Just <laughs> in the middle of of Nan and Curry in San Francisco. It was a uh, see in my head. I thought you like dude was fucking with you, and then you were like starting some shit. Uh, but I could be wrong. <laughs> You're definitely wrong. You are definitely wrong. But <laughs> you're definitely wrong. No, I remember that because I felt really bad smacking him and shit, and he was with his girl. <laughs> So I actually paid. Damn. I actually paid for their meal, and he. What? <laughs> I was about to say that, yo. You ended up paying for his meal, yo. Yeah. My bad. Let me pay for your meal, and then he let it go or something like that. Yeah, that's was, incredible. But I remember his girl giving him a look like, "Damn, you let this dude smack you and pay for your our meal, like kind of." Like, they probably, they probably broke know? up the next day. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I felt really, really bad. But this is like, yo, this is the the history that me and E Rock have. DC. Damn, we, man, we've got a lot, a, a, a lot. To, I mean, see, in we, my head, we, he's we, always starting the shit, though, right? In my head, do I? I love like how every situation is like, yo. So I mean, how it started you was you were starting shit. Like <laughs> you started. No, I wasn't. <laughs> he, no, I wasn't. E Rock, oh, in, my, in my head, E Rock pulls me into all of these situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like he pulls me into the shit. That's what he fell head. everyone. <laughs> that's that's Yo, my by, history. By, by the way, I wanted to add that Infusion Lounge in LA was a big deal for a yes. long time. It was a big staple in the city. It was, that was it was in the Universal Studio City Walk area, but it was the place to be at a point. So that was man. a fun spot, man. I missed that spot. I, yeah. I dude, here's a fun fact. I, I I owned a piece of that. That was kind of like something that 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 landed in my lap. I remember the owner, Chris, um, at the time, and, you know, God rest his soul. He actually just recently passed away, maybe about two months ago. Uh -huh. um, he, uh, you know, he he got in touch with, like, Universal City. I think it was, what was it, the Roomba Room or something like that before? Yeah, yeah. it was a Roomba Room, yeah. Yeah, it was the Roomba Room. And then, like, they got in touch with him because they had been to Infusion Lounge um, in San Francisco, and they loved what we did. Like, you know, we had... You know, at the time, like, you know, Vegas class nightlife, you know, with a little touch of Miami. Like, I think I had like Rico DeLargo playing the trumpet, you know, yeah, Rico, um, like, yeah. you know, on the day that they went there, you know, and Rico's now over at Elia Beach, like, you know, like every weekend, you know what I'm saying? He's the vibe elevator. So it gave that, like, whatever you play, like, if you played like something super hyphy, like he would play like, you know, the trumpet on top of it and just like make that shit sexy as hell. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, they got in touch with him and then. You know, they gave him the opportunity to take over that space. And then he brought me in and, you know, I, I actually had to stay down here for months at a time and work on that venue with him. And our goal there was to and it didn't work at all, really, like, you know, the way that we thought it would. Um, it was big, but I'll tell you why it was big. 
pause, by the way, pause, big pause. <laughs> we wanted to have like a nightclub, like instead of going all the way to Hollywood, that you can just literally just like, you know, go half the like, you know, distance and literally stop at the bottom of the hill and or the top of the hill before you go into Hollywood and just literally like, you know, have something close. So, you know, I started out booking like, you know, guys like, you know, that, 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 that were from Vegas and L.A. and stuff like that. And I was realizing, I was like, yo, this, is, this isn't working the way I thought it would. I thought it would really take off like really, really fast, but it wasn't. Like what I realized is that people that went to Hollywood nightlife, you know, venues like, yo, they, they were very faithful to those venues. You know, like that was like, you know, that that, that was their go-tos and, and it's really hard to break that culture unless you're a part of it. And I wasn't a part of like, you know, that Hollywood scene. I didn't know the players then. I didn't know who they were, you know, so... We, we changed our strategy, and, and, and I want to really give credit to, uh, to Mickey War because I, I hired Mickey as kind of like, you know, my, my guy, you know, boots on the ground that knew the community. Like, you know, he's from the valley, knew everyone, like, you know, in the city, knew everyone that was in, like, that vicinity, you know, to start bringing in. And, and, who, and like, the right people to book, the right promoters, all that. I didn't know that culture at all, and I thought that, like, I really thought that that Infusion Lounge brand was going to be so big and all the press that we did. And we got like a whole bunch of like, we had like Entertainment Tonight there. We had like all this big press, but it, it didn't stick in LA the way that I thought it would. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mickey w was a big reason of, of why that club really popped for, for that good amount of time. And I credit him because like I, I was, I, I had to make a grown decision. I was like, you know what, man? Like, you know, I, you know, it, it, it's tough to, to admit these things once in a while and especially when i was that young at the time like i was like yo like i'm i'm really defeated in this space like you know I, I i don't know how to make this thing really pop and i think that you should be the guy you know to sit with the ownership and my partners to you know to help build this space so you know i want to give that up to rick to to, to mickey more than anything so it's really yeah. interesting though when like a brand or a nightclub like infusion that that's based in san francisco you know, and starts opening a new venues and stuff like that. You would think the formula that worked in San Francisco would work in L.A. at the place that you're at. But it's just one of those things where a lot of dudes who have a nightclub in New York or Miami or wherever, and then they open it in Vegas and they try to run it like they're in Miami or New York and it doesn't work. Like you really, Cultures are different, man. Yeah, you have to really, yeah. really kind of like get locals and get and really understand what's going on in every city when you're going to open a new location there and like because yeah. the yeah. same formula does not work in every city and it's it's interesting though that uh, but i will say that whatever mickey did there like really worked because it, it it kept that business together for a good amount of time and, and that was where that, that that was i mean me spending that much time here and you know owning like a piece of of a nightclub like you know you know who, who else was a partner in that too um and, and i don't know if you guys even knew this but but you know and who, who's my business partner today in some other projects is a uh, cosmo. cosmo remember cosmo oh wow yeah i didn't know that yeah, yeah, I've yeah been cosmo. cosmo had a piece of it too you know and and you know oh, he cosmo. was also part of the equation of of bringing in that la local culture in, you know and i think that that was the big misstep on my end when I thought I could do it all myself, I was like, Yo, I, I could just do what I did in San Francisco and run it the way, you know, we did and we'll, we'll be fine. Not, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't, it was not. Shout to Cosmo. Was, That's Cosmo from Hyde, right? He was yeah, Cosmo out. from yeah. Hyde before that, Hayes. He was Hayes. Light yeah. group. I miss that dude. You know? I haven't seen a, him in a, in a minute. Um, he's doing him. his thing, man. Yeah. He's, he's in LA now, right? Now. Nah, nah. He, he he's he, he's a at an undisclosed location. I don't know if he wants me to tell people mm -hmm. where he's okay. at. So. Nah, he's <laughs> hiding. <laughs> I'm gonna show him this after. But yeah, you know, we're working on a couple things together right now. So, so yo, I want to ask you, man. You you um, you just um, you just announced you're with a new management group. But uh, you know, obviously you've been with Justin Zotz, and it's this new management group. It's called Three Day Weekend, right? Mm -hmm. It's with Justin Zotz, Matt Miera, Matt Miera. Was uh he was like working with Cascade, right? He worked with Vice. Still is actually, yeah. yeah. And Justin Zott's been kind of like working with you as as a manager for a while. I, I would say, what, man, I'd say role? probably four years now. Four years, like four and a half years, yeah. So like when, I, when I came down to L.A., like I signed on with him. So yeah, so I I know Justin Zott's because I actually like we we were on a, a flight together and we were like you know I didn't really know of him but I I got to know him on that flight a little bit more. Great guy, 
when he mm-hmm. represents you, Neil Jackson at the time, he was representing Neil Jackson and he was being very selective with which DJs he was managing. And um and then but now you guys just launched this new um three day weekend agency, right? Management group. And it's kind of like a rebranding of Justin Zotz. I mean, I think his what was his what was his management? Uh, company? it was called White Label Agency. White label before. agency. And then so it's yeah. been rebranded as this three day weekend and you have this new list of DJs. You got Bella Fiasco on there. Spider, Romeo yeah. Reyes, who was part of the original roster. DJ um, Quiz. Tina T. Tina T. Chris Masterson, you know, also part of the original roster. Fashion, nice. Neil Jackson, obviously. Chachi. Sorry. Chachi, yes. You know, there's a guy you got, oh, man, Chappelle something. Yeah, Dale Chappelle. I, I, you know, I think the, the, the goal, like, you know, with this, and everyone probably, you know, asked the same question, like, why you guys call it three-day weekend? Like, like, what the hell does that have to do with anything? It's, you know, it actually happened on a group chat. Um, I wasn't a big fan of it in the beginning. And then we we're like, yo, so if we're going to add people on and, and bring more people onto the roster, like, you know, what do we call this thing? And I, I forgot who brought it up. And it was just more of a thing like, why don't we just call it three day weekend? And I was like, why would you call it three day weekend? It's like, well, who doesn't like a three day weekend? And I thought about it. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And then it kind of sunk in. I was like, I kind of like the way it sounds. I kind of like how how we can kind of brand it. I think that there could, there could be like an event like component to it. I think that we can do that. Then like the marketing guy in me, you know, like starts firing off on all cylinders. But I think the goal was like, you know, to do something new and fresh coming out of pandemic. And I think that like, you know, between me and Justin, like, you know, we've done a, you know, an incredible job at, at, at getting into certain rooms. Like, you know, where people even ask me, like even some of my friends go, oh, you're there. How'd you get that? <laughs> like some of my closest friends will ask me that. Like, how did you get that? Like, you know. But uh, it goes back to just being just like, you know, good people and just like, you know, cultivating these relationships, you know, to, you know, to the point where, where, you know, people would just genuinely want to help you. And you rock, you make shit happen. Just like that Las Vegas trading card. You make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> man. And, and, I, and I have not stopped since. <laughs> by, any, by any means necessary, you rock, you make it happen. You know what I'm saying? I so. but, I, I, but but you know what though like like it's also like a thing for me like you know where i feel like the last 14 years i've learned a lot and the last like you know like especially in vegas and just been doing this for as long as everybody uh, you know that that's either listening or on this um you know this pod right now it's like you know i i wanted to take all that experience and all those lessons and all those relationships and all those strategies and apply it to people that i genuinely loved more than anything as people you know and everybody that that's on the roster like you know we've done something you know in the past or or we've known each other or this and that or we share the same aspirations where it's like you know like hey look you know i I, i've actually done that before and i can help you you know and i can kind of like help mold like you know some of the things that you're doing to where they translate, you know, and that's something that I've learned throughout the years, whether it's, whether it's bottle customers, whether it's like, you know, like how you market yourself, you know, whether it's even putting out music, you know, that's something that, that I haven't done in a while, but I know how to do, you know, whether it's how to take these, these, these things and translate them into some things that matter and things like that, that you could, you know, feed your family through, you know what I mean? Things that you can set yourself up, you know, and, there's even other lessons too, like, you know, from the financial aspect, like, you know, like, Hey, look, if you're, if, if you're going to be booked this busy, like don't blow all your money on sneakers. Like I did, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, invest into like, you know, certain things and, 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 you know, throw your own parties or, or like, yo, if I can help you put out music, I'll do that. You know, cause I have all those, all those relationships, all those relationships and all those pipelines, you know? So my, you know, my role with the agency is not necessarily a, as an agent, but more so as as a as a mentor, you know, and and even somebody that can kind of help and 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 you know even enhance like someone's narrative, you know. So do you have a partnership in the agency? I do. I you do. do. I do. I'll be it's, very it's, open with that. It's a very small, you know, part, yeah. you, you know, percentage. But you know, I do, and a lot of that is, you know, I mean, because like I, I helped Justin build a business like for the last like you know four and a half years, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so. Um, you know, Matt is a partner also. I, I I think it's interesting to be part of an agency that you kind of own a bit. Do you know what I'm saying? Did you 
kind of always want to go this route? Did you ever want to be like on scam artists? Did you? I actually got rejected to be on scam one time. I, I, on scam? I, you know, I, I love Suge. And, and, and yo, before I say this, I love here. Suge. Like, wow. yo, wait, wait. I, I've got a long time history with you, the guy. You, you don't have to say that you love Suge, okay? No, I do. I know. I, you, you don't have to say all that. But yeah, but, but I remember I, I remember one time when, when I was, I, I remember I was popping in San Francisco at the time. You know, I called him and I was like, yo, like, I want to get on the roster, this and that. He's like, you know what? You know what I need you to do, though? I need you to be that guy to where it's like, yo, if you're playing at a venue, like, you know, like your venue's got to be packed and there's got to be like fucking like 100 people waiting for, waiting to get inside. But then I, I wouldn't say it was just, re I wouldn't say it was rejected, but it was just more so, I I, I might have been kind of pushed to the side at the time. I, I, I wasn't nearly as popping as like, you know, at the time, like, you know, a vice or, or anything. I wasn't in Vegas yet. I mean, I learned a lot, like even just like, you know, from those conversations, you know, and 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 you know asking like you know agencies or or whatnot actually i think after that like you know what happened was i actually became a part of mood swing 360 and that was when my when when, when my when my my i wouldn't say career really took off but then i that was like the first like taste of really getting busy every weekend like you know like i was because they would send us on the road with like lmfao or far east movement or uh travis mccoy like they you know they were also assigned to them but they booked all their club dates it was based out of New York, right? They were based out of New York, man. And then uh, it was uh, Johnny Maroney and then uh, Ricky Greenstein. They were the guys that were very instrumental. In my, I had a Palms deal before I was with Light Group, you know, so they managed that whole entire thing. You know, I didn't get paid a lot, but like, you know, they were willing to to work with me and help build me up. You know, I, you know, I, I give them a lot of credit for like those early, year, you know, years. I mean, hey, like, you know, it looks good when you're booked with LMFAO like in Sacramento, like, you know, as the headliner and, and, and it's your name as big as theirs on a flyer. You know what I mean? And they that, that's what they did for their guys, you know, at the time. Like, like, you know, did I ever think about going this route? No, no, I, I never really did. But I, I think I did because I understand it. And what people don't know about me, like, really, is that, like, yo, I've always been more than a DJ. Like, I've always had my hands in some type of like business type shit. Like, you know, like people don't even know that I own like a graphic design agency. People don't know that, you know, I own a, a concierge company that can help you book tables in Vegas and, 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 um, you know, hotel rooms and stuff like that. People don't know that like I'm in the works of opening like a small little, like, you know, restaurant off the Vegas strip. People don't know these things, but I've always had my hands in those things. And I think that since I've, uh, people don't even know that I'm a marketing director for, for a shoe retailer. And then that's something that, that, that I've been for a long time, you know, let's, let's talk about that a little bit, because I remember we were on a flight together and we we're, and this was a few years ago, but this is when you, yeah. you, you were telling me you were working with Shoe Palace. After I left Temple, I got the opportunity to uh, to be a marketing uh, you know manager over at uh, at Shoe Palace. How I got the gig was like I was the guy that said, "Hey, look, we go to Vegas together every year for Magic, but you guys don't ever do anything." Like, yo, I, I know all these guys that that would want to throw you a party if you give gave away shoes or something like that. Even though that sounds like such a simple idea today, it was not a simple idea back then because no one was really even really doing that. You know what I mean? So what we did was I remember we partnered with Light Group and we threw like, you know, a series of parties, you know, where we would give away Jordans and give away like, you know, like just like like hot shit, like hot sneaker items. You know what I mean? And then we would hire influencers and. You know, like 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 girls that that were very embedded into like the sneaker culture and stuff like that to give it like, you know, some type of credibility. But and then that led to another gig, which I've been at for two years, you know, and I've been a marketing manager for uh, for Zen, which is a, a Zappos owned company. And, you know, if you live in, in Vegas, you know, Zappos is like, you know, a really big deal. You know, we ran the same plays that we did. We partnered with every Vegas nightclub like during Magic and and uh, like, you know, every possible opportunity we got but we even did bigger things like you know we, like it was crazy to broker deals out to sponsor like you know the main stage at rolling loud like you know two years you know in a row it was a big deal to at the time like you know like we made power 106 like our official like like you know media partner you know at the time you know what i mean and now now we're with iheart and you now now we have a a, a radio show and a podcast that's distributed through iheart and airs on two stations in la and vegas called the zen sneaker show where we talk about like, you know, sneaker culture and, and releases and stuff like that. It's kind of like, you know, like what you see on the Internet, but converted into like, you know, an audio form, you know, it's type of like thing. So um, and Kareem's done a lot of great things, too, that I've been a part of, like, you know, doing merch, like, you know, collaborations with Murakami 
and stuff like that. Like, you know, at complex con and, and, you know, we, I remember our first, our first event, like we gave away $1.5 million in, in grails, you know, just to like people that love the culture and all they had to do was just enter a rap or, you know, enter a raffle. And people were just like, yo, like, so I'm going to win a $30,000 pair of shoes for free just for downloading your app. Like, yes. So I, I've always had my hands like in, in, in some type of business, like, you know, dealing or conference call and stuff. And so I take all those lessons and I apply it to like, you know, the agency, you know, and I apply like, you know, my partnership experience with the agency, you know, and, you know, how those deals look like and how those deals sound. And I'm curious because, you know, you have a background as a booker, right? Because you were booking at Infusion and yep. now you have a background from an agency perspective, right? Because now you're a partner in an agency. So when venues started opening back up, you know, the main thing that DJs hit me up and they're, they're always damning me about is the rates and how low the rates are right now. Do you know what I'm saying? And I, and I was kind of wondering, like, a lot of these DJs, they take the lower rates, you know, you know, and uh, it's like, they're like, well, is it, is it more important that I, you know, that I fill my calendar up and I take these lower rates? Like, is the look more important? Like, is there longevity to this? You know what I mean? Does it devalue the DJ by take, like taking lower rates or something? You know what I mean? Just, just to prove that I, I'm working or um, is the look more important that I'm doing this one venue even though they're paying, they ain't paying me shit, or maybe I'm losing money doing the doing that gig. Like, what is your take on that with with your background? With my background, and and, and this is just purely on like me yeah. as 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 DJ E Rock, not not as anybody on my roster, because you know I, I or, or on our roster, you know, yeah. I'm gonna correct myself there. You know, I advise everybody to 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 do what they're willing to do. I think a lot of people are getting you know pay cuts across the board right now. You know, and what I understand from an operator standpoint from owning a club at one point from operating multiple nightclubs. I mean, you know, I've got like four successful nightclubs in San Francisco, like under my belt. So I've been in those conversations, you know, about bottom lines and, you know, return on investment and everything like, oh, a lot of these clubs were, you know, have been shuttered for a year plus. And, and I think one thing that I've really used to my advantage is like, you know, my experience of being a marketing and, you know, guy or an operator at a nightclub and understanding like, you know, what it is on the other side and understanding that, that like, you know, and, and like even my calendar, my, my calendar is really like, you know, the, 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 the venues I'm willing to do because I have the strong, long standing relationships, you know, I've either been with them for like, you know, six, seven, eight years or, you know, plus or 10 years or whichever, you know, it, it's, you know, there's a comfort level, you know, there's a comfort level to where if I'm not getting the full rate, I'm getting something close to it, but they do understand that they're going to get the return on investment from it. You know, there's, there, there's already a synergy in place, you know, obviously if I go, I mean, I, I haven't opened up any new business, like, you know, any new rooms on my personal calendar in the last 16 months or so, but, but the people that I'm playing for, like are the people that I've played for, like, you know, faithfully for the last like 10 years or so, you know, but, you know, I think though, like I said, like, like I understand the position that a lot of these clubs are in. And, you know, my big thing is that I've taken like, you know, everything that I've done throughout the last like 20 years, whether it's run a nightclub, whether it's own a concierge company, whether it's like, you know, um, like, you know, broker partnerships and stuff like that. And I bring those to the table because I know that, you know, I don't think Vegas is, is operating at its full capacity just yet. Like, you know, there, 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 there are, there aren't many conventions, you know, that are coming back to town yet. And that's a big deal. That's like, you know, what is it? 32 billion or something like that. That's missing from the bottom line right now. You know what I'm saying? Like conventions keep like, you know, those hotel rooms and everything like, you know, packed all week long. You know, they enable us to have like Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, multiple venues like, you know, and, and I, I, I just I think that Vegas is uh, it's in a position where it's bouncing back, but I don't think it's bounced back fully. I think that there's, um, you know, there's still a lot more like, you know, room for it to grow and room for us to make up. So, you know, when I go into these into these conversations, I bring every ounce of experience I have to allow like, you know, and to help, like, you know, every venue that I work with flourish. 
more than anything. Why are you smiling, man? Because <laughs> I think you've said you brought your experience to everything like like eight times. Like we we, yeah. we know yeah, because that, we know that, you that, bring your experience. Yeah. <laughs> my, nah, yeah, I, know, I, I bring so my like, marketing ability, my business, my business aspects. Yeah, you know, we know, because, we know. Because, I, because I, I I knew coming out of this that partnership was going to be super important. Well, hey, yo, fellas, um, I'm sorry to do this. I got to jump off. I got to stream at seven o'clock. Okay, so I got like ten minutes to get my shit together. Yo, e Rock, man, thanks for um jumping on and doing this shit with us, man. Yeah, of course, man, of course. You you didn't really answer my question. Do you think it devalues the DJ by taking the lower rates? I mean, if you take a rate, that's your rate. That's the thing. But then well, again, from like, from what I got from what you said is is it's at the DJ's discretion and maybe what they're willing to do. Like yeah. if they're willing it's at to the take DJ's that discretion, rate. though. Like but you know what I'm saying? Like, but if they if, do if, take, if it. I have like a ten year relationship and that person's been so kind to me over the last ten years, we shut down for fifteen months and he calls me going like, yo. I need your help to reopen and get this thing back going. I'm not going to tell him to go fuck himself. I'm not, you know, like, like, like I'm going to work with him. You know what I mean? Because like, yo, like, you know, that, that's one thing that, that I'm so strong on is that like, yo, a lot of these relationships like that I hold, you know, close to me, it's like, yo, they were kind to me. You know what I mean? They, they, when things were popping, yo, we were all eating. You know, how do we get past that? You know, how do we get there again? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you totally. think that a conversation needs to be had at some point? Like, let's say if uh, DJ's willing to take that lesser rate, maybe six oh, yeah, months yeah. down the line. I've like, already had those conversations that. in my in, in my world. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, I'll, I'll be completely transparent. Like, yo, like, you know, I mean, I, I took a lower rate just to kind of get out of the house again, you know. But, you know, we got it back to, you know, to where it used to be. And, and that was a part of the the conversation but i know these people though like like i've i've you know th this wasn't like yo and at the same time like it wasn't like i didn't talk to them all through pandemic mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i talked to everybody through pandemic checked on everybody made sure that everyone was good you know try to help out wherever i could you know what i'm saying like i mean th there was even conversations back in the day like you know like mid pandemic i'm like yo like you know if, if an artist is willing to do a live stream out of your venue like yo how do we figure out like how to get sponsorship dollars to get you know some money going through like you know your you know your 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 room again like you know like like stuff like that so you know there were always conversations throughout the pandemic and and like i said everyone on my calendar like i was comfortable to go back to work for immediately like all right i've, I've worked with you for like 15 years you know i know you're not gonna do me wrong but at the same time like you know understand that yo i know that the club's got to get back but I got to get back too because I, I missed out on money for a year plus as well. You know what I mean? With with your agency right now and and the uh, and the roster DJs, do you feel responsible for them? Uh, and and it's more just and Matt thing than anything. You I think so. I do feel yeah. a sense of responsibility in regards to like you know the mentorship and 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 the marketing aspect more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a big believer in energy. Energy is like everything in this world, man. So what you put in is, you know, what you get out. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like, you know, my 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 big thing. And, and if I can think of ideas and and plays that we can run, you know, I'll bring those to the table with the artist or whatnot. You know, I, the only unfortunate thing about, you know, that right now is that we don't know truly like what the hell is going to go on in the next like, you know, a few months with this Delta variant. And now, I mean, yo, we re, we're, we're I mean, I'm already getting calls with not me personally, but like, yo, you know, some people have had to like pull back on dates and bookings because, right. you know, their city or their, their, their market might, you know, require like, you know, them to like, you know, scale back on capacity or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's the only thing, but you know, I'm confident that once we can get past this and, and I hope to God that we can, that like, you know, we can really get some things going. It's so. three, it's three day weekend trying to recruit other DJs or y'all good with y'all roster right now. Uh, I, I think we're good right now. You know, I think that's the thing with us is, you know, bandwidth is, is, is everything too, you know? Yo, I, I got a, I got a question and, um, I don't know much about it, but I've heard it through the grapevine through like friends and word of mouth. You know what I'm saying? And it has to do with your name, DJ E-Rock. We're not talking about that. You don't want to talk about it? Not at all. Not at all. It's in the past. <laughs> It's in the past. It happened. It is what it is. All nah. right. I, I just don't know much about what happened. You know, hey, then, then it looks like you're not going to know much about it. But well, I, I know, you know, obviously I'm friends with <laughs> I've heard his side, but I've never really heard your side. I don't think anybody will ever will. Well, that's, you, that's fair. Yeah. I, I respect you not wanting to talk about it. That's cool. Well, how, well this is a separate question. What does E-Rock come from? Because I don't know the, the origin of the name. Where it came Man, from. 
so my, my first DJ name was like, it, dude, it was whack. It was like DJ Ruthless or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first DJ name. And I kind of owe my my um my, my DJ name to my dad because me and my dad, we used to watch movies all the time when, when I was young. You know, he bought me my first set of turntables. Um, and he did it so I, you know, I, I, I would stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. I still got in trouble though. Still ended up hanging out with the wrong people, like you know, in middle school and stuff like that. I got into some bad things. Got expelled from fucking middle school and shit like that. But you know, he he did everything that he could to uh, to to make sure I was out. I, you know, I was out of trouble. And he didn't make a lot of money. So like back then, like like you know, fifteen hundred bucks for like you know a, a DJ set, like two twelves and a mixer. That's a lot of money. It's a lot, you know. So. You know, but I gave my dad up. Uh, I, 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 I give it up to my dad because, like, you know, he really, really pushed. He, he really tried to do anything to push me in the right direction to get just to have something that I stuck with in my life. And DJing was it. So we were watching a movie one time. You guys remember uh, South Central? Hell yeah. Yeah. Remember the kid, young J-Rock? Yeah, OG, OG Bobby Johnson. I remember I loved that movie and I watched it with my dad. And I looked at my dad like he was OG Bobby Johnson. And then he had a little, <laughs> young little J-Rock. Yeah. You know? And it, he doesn't, even, I mean, well, he, I don't even think he really even knew this story. But then, like, yo, like, when I've heard, yo, what's your name, kid? Oh, I'm young J-Rock. Da, 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 da. I was like, man, I could be young E-Rock. <laughs> and that was when the first time I called myself young E-Rock. And I stuck with that, like, all through high school. And then when I got on the radio when I was 16 years old, and then I just kept it. And then when I turned 18, I dropped the young, and I just kept E-Rock throughout the whole entire time. So. That's crazy. All right, so I actually want to I, I want to talk to you about radio because you've been on radio for 25 years. I mean, that that is quite a legacy. It's a long man. time. It's a long fucking time. And you you were like I mean, I, I want to talk about this in San Francisco. It's like you were one of the youngest on-air personalities in San Francisco. You were like on the yeah. radio at like 15 years old, right? 15 and a half, 16 years old. I I got on the radio before I got my driver's license. I mean, Franzen, wow. how old was Franzen? He was like 13 or some shit or 14? Franzen was like 13, 14, so he holds the record, you know? Or wow. I, I don't know. I think Jay Espinosa probably beat that record because he was younger than us. Like, when he really? started, like, he was younger than us. Damn. Uh, really? That I young? didn't know that. <laughs> it's like a, dude, Jay started young, man. Jazzy Jim discovered Jay, and he was young, bro. It's like a sweat shop over young. there in San Francisco. They're just hiring all these kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jay was young, man. <laughs> Jay might have been younger than me, you know what I mean? But Franzen was definitely the youngest. Wow. And then, um, was it with Franzen, yeah, man, you, I got on the like, radio when I was 15, 16. I was like a sophomore in high school. Wow. So, like, you know, this is a time. And, 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 I mean, we so old, man. There was no social media back then. So, like, that was, like, it. You know what I mean? Like, like if you were on the radio, I mean, imagine being on the radio like on a Wednesday night at like eight forty-five when everyone's listening, and doing their homework, and going to school the next day. Like that was like, man, that was like a dream come true for me back then. Crazy, yeah. crazy. And was Franzen like so, a like a mentor for you back then? Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I used to when he was on the radio in the Bay Area, I used to be a character on his show. What do you mean a character? Um, what is that? I used to make like voices and shit on this show. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah. We, oh, wait, wait, wait. Like wait. voices and accents and all that can, shit. Can we hear some voices, please? Hell no. Nah, because <laughs> yeah, I was going to cancel for it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like, this was back then where, where, where it was a different time where you can do a character like that sounded like that. You know? Was this Wild 94.9? Uh, no, this was KMEL. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this was, this was before Wild. So, what, then, you um, were like in the background being like, yo, friends in. What's the rental report today? Were Something you like, like that. that. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, you know, I was a character on the show. And then I also used to intern. I used to answer phones. KML, mm -hmm. hello. KML, hello. You know, caller one, caller two, whatever, or even taking requests. And I used to also pull the carts. All the commercials were on carts back then. And music was on CDs. Mm -hmm. So if they gave me a list of shit to pull, I used to be the kid that has to pull all that stuff. And I did it for Chewy. Did it for Franzen and Trace, like mm. you know, but but I I think like you know just because of the fact that that me and Franny like you know kind of shared the same path just at different times, like you know we became very close, like you know throughout the years, you know there are times where we kind of fell out of touch a little bit, you know, but we always picked up where we left off, you know, and Franny like he, he, there's even a lot of stuff that like like even like when I'm on the air and like you know when I'm like you know. I don't know what you want to call it shit announcing. I don't know. Like I'm just like, you know, conversing with people. There are things like habits that I, that I catch myself that I remember growing up and listening to friends and like interview Biggie or interview 
like you know all these like big like artists back then that we looked up to that that all like catch like just like certain things you know like i like for instance i i always say ladies and gentlemen on the air today and and i've been told like yo don't ever say that again like yo you don't have to say that i'm like man I, i've been saying that for years because franzen says ladies and gentlemen da, 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 you know what i mean like i got that from him you know what i mean but there's also other things and other habits that i picked up from other personalities that i've worked with throughout the years but franzen was definitely the most impactful like you know in my career in wow. general because i always i always wanted to be like him I remember being an intern going like, yo, I wanted to be a dual threat. I wanted to be a guy that can play records on the radio, be a mixer and be an on-air personality, which I am now. So and, you, and at the same time, my sneaker habit started because of him. So when you started yeah. as an on-air personality though, first, like, um, no, I started out as a mixer as a mixer. Okay. Yeah. So I started out doing like a 15 minute mix and then I started to like an hour. And then I started getting gigs at other stations doing a daily mix show. And then today I'm on the air six seven days a week pretty much wow. so and syndicated too and syndicated too so you know but i yeah i owe a lot to that just like you know just my journey in general radio so. basement that's your show right now right yeah that's my show man like if you're in vegas you know what i mean like you could definitely hear that yo a lot of people actually like ubers like they'll actually like like recognize like my voice but it's fucked up though because i always get an uber drunk you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's usually like, you know, I'm going from spot to spot. My my show airs from 10 to 12 and somebody will recognize my voice once in a while because they're actually listening to the show. Mm. It's usually the Ubers that that that, that are listening to because it airs from 10 to 12 on Saturday nights. So they're like, yo, you sound familiar. And then fucking I'm drunk as shit. Always. It sucks, man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry you guys see me like this, but I've had a long night. <laughs> Take me to Dre's. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at some point you were like a, a ver like a staple, just like Franzen was a staple in, in San Francisco for radio, yeah. right? He was like very influential. And you kind of like he kind of came to Vegas and you kind of you kind of uh took over a little bit, right? In San Francisco after him, right? Yeah. Yeah. And after he left, you know, there there was definitely a change in the guard. But you know what's crazy is that, you know, and, and and I don't mean nothing by it, man. But like, yo, for years, people would call KML because I was at KML even after Franz and left mm -hmm. for a long time. And people would call KML and ask when he was coming back. Wow. Crazy. And to be honest, man, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it if people still think or still do. Maybe not as much, but like people I remember, remember 2008 or 2007 or something like that. People were like, yo, man, people still call like and ask if he's coming back. I was like, yo, Franny made his mark in San Francisco, man. Yeah. And he's a legend. Like he is he is by far, like, you know, like when it comes I mean, him and Chewy, you know, and Sway, those are the three big pillars in my eyes of San Francisco radio. Mm -hmm. So and you have some other guys on the pop side too, Jazzy Jim, St. John, you know. That are still like doing their thing, you know. But like, yeah, the, the that guy is a pillar. In, I, in, in I I love that. I love that friends and is still doing it too. Like he's still yeah. rocking the club, still doing it, man. You know, and even even like when he's like, you know, adjusting to a new platform like Twitch, you know, he's still killing it. He still does it. You know, it's just every day. Yeah, that guy is on every day. It's crazy. It's a testament. It's really a testament. To me, and yeah. it, it's really motivating, inspiring for me when I see motherfuckers like that do it, man. Uh, he is the most consistent you'll ever see, ever. He never changes it up on anything, man. Like nothing. He's been the same guy mm -hmm. since I've known him, and and he's always been, you know, that guy. Always been that guy. So, yeah. is there? It, you moved to L.A. right to L.A. radio. I, I it yeah, was like I, a. I moved. Four and a half years ago. So it'll be five years in like February. Wow. That was kind of a big move though, right? To go to LA radio. Right Bro, you right? know what's crazy, man? I upset it a lot of people when I moved. Really? From the Bay? From the Bay, the Bay. or from There's a lot yeah. of people from the Bay that were really upset that I moved to LA. <laughs> Why did you move? Yeah. You know, I just felt like I kinda did everything that I could in in the Bay. You mm -hmm. know, I mean I was already like five nightclubs in, like on like clubs that I did bookings at and like I was like I already, you know, did my thing with the Giants. You know, I, I'm I done my thing with the 49ers. I'm still with them. And like yo, I just kind of felt like you know I could do more. And at the same time, like hey, let's be honest, man. Like at some point, like yo, we're not gonna all be DJing that much. You, you know what I'm saying? It's really all up to us, like how long we're gonna do it. But at some point, there's gonna be 
a time where you can take all that experience and even vibe experience and even just knowing how to program and you're going to have to convert that into that experience into, into like, you know, something that, that you can make money off of a job, you know, a, a, a role, a director's, you know, position, you know, whichever. And those jobs didn't exist in, 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 um, in the Bay area really. Like every sports team that I played for, I had to create those programs. And that's that that's the crazy thing about it. Like it wasn't like they put out a casting call and said, We're looking for a DJ. No, it was me knocking on the door, going like, Hey, look, I know what other people are doing in other markets, mm -hmm. like the Iries of the game. This could be amazing here in San Francisco if we had a San Francisco or Bay Area swag to it. I had to create all those things. You know what I mean? So like the Bay is not really an industrious city. It's it's an amazing city of culture. But I just felt like I kind of had did everything that I was going to do. And I was like, yo, am I going to run another nightclub again, like in the city and, you know, just kind of do the same thing. And I remember I, 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 I made the decision after my mom decided to move to Florida. You know, I lost my father mm -hmm. um, actually 10 years ago to this week. Oh. Um, and, uh, you know, I had nothing really holding me back. Like after I had left, I think it was love and propaganda at the time, you know, and I was like, you know what, man, like. I got to do something new. I got to shake it up a little bit, you know? Um, so did you think I, I it was, just, did you think it was going to affect your ties to the community? Like moving from such a culturally involved city, like San Francisco to another culturally involved city, like LA. Yeah. They're it, almost it, it rivals, did with sports. Right? It yeah. did with sports for sure. That's where I was going. Cause I feel like there's such rivals in so many ways. Like but moving then, from the Bay to LA is just, yeah, is this, you know, that's not and, easy. and it's crazy. Like even people in my group chat, like from back home, like, I've been in the same group chat for like 10 years, you know, and, and like, they still even throw jabs at me for moving to LA. Like, yo, I was like, dog, I'm still like, I've been here for five years, like almost five years. You still on that shit? Like, come on, man. Yo, I'm happy. Be happy for me. You know what I mean? Like, but you understand on. what that is, right? Like that's like, it's that Dodgers and Giants shit. Yeah. Like I used to go cheer until Barry Bonds to go suck a dick. <laughs> when, I, when I was 12, like, you understand, that's a real thing in LA. Like, we hate yeah. giants of course, to the yeah. core. So I, know, get what, yeah, I get why your, your people yeah, are sweating you. People, I mean, and people still sweat me, man. And to be honest, man, like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like LA enabled me to grow, not only. You ever seen that meme? Like, yo, if you really want to flex, like, yo, like, move out of your hometown and start over. Yeah. And that that's the, the the real definition of growth. And if you can do that, then you've really grown in your life, you know. And I think, I think that was what like LA did for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And especially being like four and a half years in, you know. And, and you know, I, and to be honest, man, I got the best of friends down here more than anything because they 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 constantly, you know, whoop my ass into shape. You know what I mean? That's you know, mm -hmm. five deluxe, you know, scratchy, um, you know, like those guys are are constantly keeping me on my toes more than anything. Oh, yeah. pause. Jesus. <laughs> Chill <laughs> out, man. Right that was saying. nuts. That one was nuts. You keep me on my toes. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Eve, but that was wild. <laughs> all, right, all right. I'll give you that one. All right. You get one you get one pause of the year. There you go. <laughs> nah, but like, you know, it's enabled me to grow. Like I remember Deluxe texted me like one time, like, you know, I was like, yo, we gotta get you healthy, dog. And I was like, all right, I have no idea how to do that. You know, and I've lost 70 pounds, like, you know, in the process, like doing that, you know, wow. since that phone call, you know. 70 um, pounds? You were that heavy? You don't you don't, I don't say heavy. you never even seemed that heavy to be losing 70 pounds, bro. Bro, I was that heavy. I was that heavy. I mean, your head looks smaller, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Got the Beetlejuice filter on B. Nah, but, you know, like, like, like yo, you know, but those are things that, that mean a lot to me because I, I would struggle with my weight, you know, back up home. I, I would never know. I never knew, like, kind of like how to accomplish it. You know, no one's really sat me down and really told me what I needed to do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and this is when five was losing a lot of weight, remember? You know, so, you know, that, you know, and, and I mean, just kind of watching them and then even from just like, you know, how I carried myself and how like I marketed myself and stuff like that. I learned a lot just like, you know, from watching like, you know, you know, my friends and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's it, it's definitely paid off more on a personal level, more than anything, you know, to have them like, you know, be my support system down here, you know. And, and I think, um, you know, I was able to grow just fucking a lot, man, just a lot. And, it's it, you know, it's crazy that you say like. I feel like more people from the Bay hated the fact that I moved to L.A. rather than L.A. people hated 
me moving to LA from the Bay, which was crazy to me. And, and, and for a long time, I've always, you know, I worked for the Giants, so I understand what that, that rivalry was like, you know what I mean? Beat LA, beat LA, beat LA. And he, and actually I carried that beat LA banner until probably like, you know, a couple months ago where, you know, and I won't say his name because I know you got a lot of Bay area people that listen to, to, to the podcast. It was a very well-known, you know, figure back home that I called one day. And, and I remember I called him and I was like, yo man, like, should I still be like, you know, the beat LA guy, like on LA radio. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. He was like, yo, you've been down there for like close to five years. Do you plan on moving back? I was like, probably not. You know, I've got other plans, you know, and, and you know, I, I love it here. And this has been home. My life has really changed down here. I've been the happiest I've ever been, you know, and I don't get me wrong. I, I've all, I was always happy up north, but like it was just a different type of like, you know, like sense of happiness down here. And, you know, I kind of started naturally like, you know, really starting to gravitate towards like, you know, just really embracing L.A. like, you know. I've had some of the biggest opportunities I've ever had, you know, on radio down here. You know, I'm on the air every day at 2 p.m., you know, which is a highly trafficked hour. Like, yo, you go on the roads at 2 p.m., man, it's 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 jam-packed. Mm -hmm. More than sometimes more than 5 p.m., especially during the pandemic. The ratings look good, and, and that's the thing that I'm thankful for. Because if my ratings ain't good, then obviously I'm not on the radio no more. So people are embracing me. So I decided to really be down for like a city that embraced me. As you know, I had to embrace them back. You know, and, and it's it's crazy. I guess to what I'm saying is just like, yo, like, you know, uh, I, I grew like I just a ton of growth came out of me living here. Like I, I do. I want like beat L.A. banners all over my house anymore. No, because my neighbor is a big Dodgers fan. You know, my best friends are big Laker fans. And when they and I see what happens when when when, when these like, you know, sports teams win and how everyone becomes their best friend and how everyone is super happy. And I want that for them. I can't you know lie. You used to piss me off. I know I did. When I know he was I on did. On the radio, he was on the radio. He'd be like, "Yo, right when they were playing the Giants or whatever, he'll be like, beat LA, beat LA." So much so, and I apologize to you now. But we got entered on Instagram because you were we posting did. some shit. We were po you were posting some shit, and I was just like, "Fam, come on! Like, you don't come to our city and then chance beat LA on the radio as the Dodgers just beat the Giants, the letting out." And I was just like, yo, come on. Like, I was really like, but that was just a sense of that rivalry. It was nothing personal, by the way. It was just no, a yeah, sense yeah, of that know, rivalry. I think, I think for me, it's like, yo, like, you know, I, I, I love seeing everybody win, you know? And, and I, I love seeing yeah. my neighbors win. I love seeing my friends win. I love Not seeing if he's chanting Peter Lay, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I don't do it anymore because, like I said, it's like, yo, like, you know, I had a long talk with Jay Cruz about it. And he was like, yo, man, you know, it's okay, you know, if you wear a Dodgers hat now. It's okay if you wear if if you if you cheer the Lakers and don't mind, like you know them winning and getting their shine. And and yo, in the Bay Area, man, yo, forget about it. You're never gonna find that at all, unless they moved from LA and moved up to the Bay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, yo, I don't mind it now. And I, you know, like I want the Lakers to win championships because I live here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, the happiest man. years of my life for here. You know and you know, sad day, man. You turn your back on the bay, man. That's I'm not yeah, turning my man. back on the bay, That's man. The bay up. built. Y'all heard it Y'all heard it here first. He just breaking news. <laughs> y'all heard it here first. That's crazy. Turn his back on yeah. the bay. I'm only. Hey, look. I'd rather be known <laughs> for who I included versus who I excluded moving forward. That's, That's really cool. like you know my mantra nowadays. And Jamie even said, like, yo, like, you're cool with everybody. But, I mean, I would like to try to maintain that as much as possible. But I'm not going to let a sports tiff get in front of, like, you know, get in front of a friendship. Like, yo, my, my, like, my, all my friends were at a, were at a, a, a Giants game the other day. And they were all, like, texting me and this and that. And it's like, yo, it's all good, man. Yeah, it's fine. It, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, like, past that now. You know what I mean? Like, like, hey, if the Giants win, cool. I, you know I'm, what? I'm with it. That's you what know what? I, I gotta get you a Dodger jersey. Just, we'll just end it at that. I do. Hey, hey, you know what though? And you can ask Mickey. Known fact, man. I did buy like five Dodger hats the other day from him. That's good. I say, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna spend this much money on Dodger hats, I'm gonna put it in a, in a homie's pocket first. Well, they're my it fucking took a lot hats out of me. I was like, yo, I can't believe I'm doing this. Bro. Yeah, those hats are expensive though. If you bought them all, those Olympic shits. Yeah, he put all them. Of them. Yeah, <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love that about the Bay, though, man, like how the Bay Area, they just ride for each other so hard. And I love how the local music lives no matter 
whether the whole uh whether the rest of the country is listening to them or not do you understand what i mean like they really don't give a fuck if new york is playing bay area shit bay area shit it's one of those great things where I, when I, whenever I would play it's a in the Bay, self-sufficient ecosystem. Yes, that's what it is. And it's like whenever sure. I would go in that city, I'd be like, "What is the shit popping in this city?" And it's one of those great things where it's like only these songs are working in this city, and it's facts. It's one of the great things I love about the Bay, and I really, you know, being from New York, you know, being new to the West Coast, it's something I quickly started to respect and learn about hyphy music and all of that shit. Like the first five years I was out here, I'm like. Yo, this shit is crazy. Like, this is a movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm still one of the first people to support Hyphy on LA radio. Always. So it's like, so I haven't turned my back on 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 on, on the Bay. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yo, I've just like, you know, just different strokes for different folks for me right now. That's just it. You know what I mean? Like, I've been here, been here almost five years, man. You know what I mean? I've soaked up the culture more than anything. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up earlier. You kind of come from like radio royalty, huh? From the Philippines, yes. Yeah, in the Philippines, your un- your uncle was like the Johnny, Car- like, the, like the Johnny Carson from out there. You know what's crazy is that if you were to bring up my uncle to a lot of like your Filipino friends' parents, they yeah. would wig out. And I never understood that until probably like when I was in my twenties. But I always knew him as being my dad's favorite uncle. You know what I mean? And I remember I uh, I had went to the Philippines for my homie's wedding, and I, we had a stop in Manila. First time I've ever been to the Philippines ever in my life, which is really sad. I should, I should be going there a little bit more. I remember I called him, you know, when he was still alive, and, uh, you know, well, I asked what, him, like, hey, his, look. What's his name? His name? Eddie Alardi. Eddie so his Alardi. name is Eddie Alardi. He's like, he, he, he was like, I mean, dude, put it this way, man. Like, yo, this dude interviewed every big celebrity that came to the philippines like he was like he was like yo like like how we how we see like the breakfast club or or something like that you know how they have every big guest in the world yeah like you know that come through like the u.s like he was that dude for like the philippines during his time like yo the jackson five was on his show mm-hmm. and this was like and he's the, got pictures the, of that this is like the 1950s right pretty much he yeah was yeah this is 1950 this is a long time ago way before our time like yo we 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 weren't even we, we weren't even a tinkle in the chest yet. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but like, you know, he was like that dude that interviewed all these big artists, like, you know, Madonna, Michael Jackson. Like he was like that guy. Uh, I went to go visit him in the Philippines, had dinner with him, and I didn't really realize like how big of a deal he was until he went he went to meet me in the lobby of uh of my hotel. And then even when the hotel operator called me and said, hi, you know, excuse me, sir. Is this Eric Negrompa? I'm like, yes. Uh, like, she, she was like shook. Like, yeah, we have a, an Eddie Yalardi down here at the lobby waiting for you. Like, she was like shaking in her voice. I was like, what the hell? Like, you know, I never seen that, you know? I went downstairs. Man, this dude is is everyone. I mean, first of all, like, yo, if you're like Jay Leno or Johnny Carson, like, you're not walking around, like, you know, the like, like, you know, the, 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 the lobby of anywhere, like, you know, w- w- you know, because, you know, you're going to be bothered. You know what I mean? But he was like, you know, a politician and, and a TV guy and a, like, you know, a radio guy. Everyone like from that day forward treated me hella different in that hotel, which was crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Which was nuts. I went to dinner with him. Like it was just like, yo, like, you know, like he, he didn't wait for nothing. Like, you know, he was just he was royalty, you know. And one of the crazy things was like, you know, I remember how proud I was to tell him I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm on the radio in Los Angeles. Um, this and that, da, 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 da. He said, that's good. So you're, 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 you're talking and playing music and everything. I'm like, yeah. And the first thing he said was like, yo, you could thank your jeans for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Broadcasting, you know? broadcasting's in your blood, man. For real. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, man. So like, it, it's it's you know, one of those but, things. Did you know about it when you were young? Like, did it plant the seed? Nah, he was just he was just like you know like the cool ass uncle at the family party with a deep ass voice. Wow. And that my uncle and now he was just my uncle and my dad loved him. My grandfather loved him. You know that's all I knew. Yeah. Until like I started getting older and realizing like all right this dude is a big deal in the motherland, like in where like you know where my or like where my family is from Mm -hmm. not just in the city like in the whole country like the whole country loves them 
Like it's like it was insane to know that, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, he, he might be right. Away, with passed me. away last year, actually, during the pandemic for oh, man. natural uh, causes. Though. Condolences, Sorry, man. man. Yeah. That's the he point. might be right about the gene pool because I feel like you one of them dudes that could just you could be like a politician one day, bro. Like, nah, nah, nah. There's too much dirt you can dig up on me. <laughs> nah, 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 no, nah. No, no fears of haze, bro. Hey, all that Pete Chirac? Nah, it's not happening, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, D Rock is a politician. Is fucking scary. By the way. <laughs> Is it though? Is it really? Is it yeah, really scary? you know, if I become a part, uh, you know, if I become a president, I'm gonna have to pardon crooked because you know he's still gonna be starting shit. <laughs> nah, I don't start nothing. I'm a good yo. <laughs> yo, just hire him as a, as a fucking your security guard, bro. Anything nah, that nah. gets close to I you, I got a good right. heart. I, I'm not a shit starter. I just got a good heart. I'm, I'm anymore. A de- I'm anymore. the defender. I'm anymore. a defender. I'm the defender. Yeah, yeah, you're the people. defender. I'm the defender. You're the bodyguard. No, no, you're the I'm, body I'm not a bodyguard. You, 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 you defending the reason why you were I'm upset. The I'm the defender. <laughs> I'm the defender of uh, what's right and what's true and what's good. And In your know. head. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. In my head. Yo, E-Rock, thank you so much for coming uh, coming on, on the show, man. Is there anything else we want to ask about or, or anything? No, no, no. How does it feel to be the best podcast in, uh, in Las Vegas? That, 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 uh, that's, that's definitely a big... Uh, yo, when I seen that, I was like, yo, that's dope, man. It's really dope. So, I mean, you guys are like the most consistent, like, you know, that I've that I've seen. No breaks. You know what I mean? During the pandemic, you guys did the Twitch thing. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you guys have stayed true to like literally like everything you guys, you know, have started to do. Like it's hasn't wavered or changed directions or anything. So yeah, because, how does that feel? Well, it feels like I'm continuing my defender, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Like I'm continuing the defender you know, person that I am. I'm just continuing. Could you imagine Crooked as a, as a lawyer? <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. Oh, man. Imagine oh, Crooked. Oh, I would pay for that. I would pay for him to be my lawyer. Yo, man. Like, I'm, 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 imagine Crooked as, as a door guy in Miami. Nah, nah, nah. Don't do, Yo, don't B, it's that. not your night tonight. Nah, I said, get the fuck out of here. It's not your night tonight. I let everyone in. I'd be letting everyone in. I'd be like, yeah, you're <laughs> no, feel bad for people. I'd be like, yo, you just yeah. come in. Just come in. Just come in. Just, just go in. You ain't got the right shoes on, but come on, it's just going. I'd be like, nah. they should have, they should have, they should have shot that Zen. You know what I mean? But whatever. <laughs> Yo, E Rock, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Hope I appreciate you, you yeah, man. Before, There's before we be go, some people from back home going like, man, you, how dare you wear a Dodger hat? It's like, man, I love it here, man. <laughs> Let me live. Yo, before, before you go, I have a special guest that's gonna join the Zoom. Okay. His name is uh, formerly E Rock. He's gonna join us in one second. Shut the fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's like, kick right. I'm out bro, of here, man. I, bro, I live close to E Rock. He's gonna come find me, bro. Chill. Jesus Christ. Nah, uh, man. Yo, E Rock. Thank you for coming through, man. Uh, much respect. You always get shit done, Mr. Get Shit Done over here. All right, man. We out, man. Peace. If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.